So as we get started today, this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point, just a look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Cozy Pup Dog Crochet Sweater. This is using thicker yarn. So we'll need an L or an eight millimeter size crochet hook. We have four different sizes in this. We have small, medium, large, and extra large and I'm gonna be taking your way through it and we have to make some decisions. You will notice that this pattern is color coded. So the small is red, medium is orange, and L is green and extra large is blue. So what I'm going to recommend a few things before we get started just to make your life a lot easier. So in preparation for a pattern like this, I like to circle the numbers that mean something. So whenever there's a number and then a parenthesis and with a number, number and a number, that means that there's four sizes being stated within this instruction. So repeat second row 16, 24, 36 or 42 times. Which one are you gonna do? You're only gonna do the number that makes sense for the pattern. So if I do the small, I'm only gonna repeat the second row 16 times. If I'm doing extra large, I'll repeat the row 42 times. So when it comes over to instructions like this, whenever there's a differential like this, so chain one work 18, 26, 38, 20 or 44, you have that and you're only gonna choose the number that makes you to the size that you're gonna work on. Now when you have information like this, it's not only in the stitch counts, but it's also in the sizing. So whenever you have something like this, it says beginning measures five, six, eight, nine and a half inches. So you will see that even measurements are going to be provided like that. So it's gonna be a nice, a great little pattern to be able to work with and you're gonna sew it up once we get it so the coat will be completely open and we're going to get ourselves started. So an eight millimeter size L crochet hook in order to play. Karen Tea Cakes is the recommended yarn and you can see that the number of balls is one so a ball for small and medium and then large takes two balls and extra large takes two balls. So you get to decide what you would like to do. So without further ado, let's get started and we're gonna start with the neck ribbing first. So let's get started with the neck ribbing that you see here. So we're going to chain four loosely and then one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then one single crochet in each across. And then the second row is working in the back loops only and one in each of the stitches. So when we do this, there's actually only three stitches back and forth across the rows and we need to repeat then the second instruction either 16, 24, 36, 42 times. That's our goal for doing neck ribbing and that's what we're gonna demonstrate next. So let's begin with the instruction and we're gonna chain four to begin. All sizes will chain four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And now we're, let's do row number one. In row number one, we're going to go second chain from the hook. So count it back, so one and two. And you're gonna go into the back hump of that one. It makes the chain look a lot better. So you're gonna do that one plus the two that are left. So you technically only have three stitches across. Because it's extra chunky yarn, there's gonna be a lot less stitch work involved. Let's turn our work and begin row number two. In row number two, in all the remaining rows, we're going to do the same thing. So you'll chain up one, and if you're new to crochet, you wanna go into the back loop. So if you go into the full stitch, that's the stitch. If you go into the first one, the first loop, that's the front loop. And if you dive into the one behind, that's the back loop. And so you're gonna go into the back loop of each stitch across. And there, again, there's only three. Okay, so the pattern now states, repeat the last row, which we just did, either 16, 24, 36, or 42 times. So you're going to do that. So I'm gonna leave that in your hands. So what you should know though, is that you've already done two rows and if you add the number that it's suggesting, just rem remember when you have, if you're adding 16 rows, you'll have a total of 18. So if you have 24 rows, you'll have 26. If you have 36 rows, you'll have 38 and 42, you'll have 44. So just make sure you keep an eye on that and please just go back and forth and get the number of rows that you need to get in order to start with the body next. So I now have the collar here, the neck ribbing. So there's a total of 18 um, rows complete. So in your case, it depends on the size. There could be 26, 38, or 44. So now we're gonna work the body from this and you will notice that the number of stitches that we're going to work across is equal to the number of rows that this is. So if I have 18, there's going to be 18 single crochets going across. So if you have the 26, 38, or 44, it's the same thing. What I'm going to recommend to you is to get 
a stitch marker or a spare piece of yarn and fold this in half like this. And this is just to verify that you have the right count and just put a stitch marker in. So the way that I do something like this it says work 18, 30 or 26, 38 or 44. So what I want to do is that I wanna take that number divided by two and so I wanna get half of that number on this side of the, of the neck and half the number on the other. It beats going all the way across and then realizing that you've used all, all your stitches and you're still not at the end or you've gotten to the end and you still have to add more. This helps you at least get to the halfway point so that you can strategize. Let's now begin to work on the body first row. We're gonna pick up the pattern here, body first row, second row, third row, and then we're gonna repeat a second and third a set number of times. So it's one, three, five, or eight more times more. And that's what we're going to do. So let's begin and we're going to start with the body and we need to either work 18, 26, 38, or 44 single crochets across. And again, that depends on your size. So let's begin and I've already put the stitch marker in as I just talked about so that we can have strategy. Now right where I left off I wanna go all the way across and I have 18 rows so there should technically be one single crochet at the end of each of these rows. But I wanna make sure that I do get my nine because that's half of 18 so take your number, divide it by half and then that should be where you get to the, at the middle. To go across just chain up one and just start counting out the first one. So we say one and just be strat uh, strategic at the end of each row and this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I'm now at the halfway point. So I know that's right. So I'm just gonna jump on over and then just continue my journey across. So I'm gonna do the other nine. So you can still count continuously. So I can say this is 10 and 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. So I know that I've gone all the way across right to the end and now that's great. The other thing I need you to do before you move on is that I need you to move the stitch marker. So let's talk about that. What's gonna come in handy for you is if you move the stitch marker to a different spot. So I've just now finished. I have not turned and I want to just place this stitch marker so I can see it and just put it through some of the stitch work on this side of the project. We're gonna be using this stitch marker to know if we're on the right side or the wrong side of the project because it does matter. So whenever I see this stitch marker I know I'm on the wrong, uh, right, or so I'm on the right side and if I don't see it I know I'm on the wrong side and this will help us a lot. So let's turn our work and begin row number two. So rows two and three are going to work together so make sure you're keeping an eye on that. And so in row number two you're gonna chain up one and the first stitch will have two single crochets in it. So one and two. Moving along every stitch now to the end except for the very last stitch is gonna be the same as one single crochet and you'll put two single crochets in the very last stitch and that's gonna be row number two. So in the very last stitch just put in two single crochets and turn your work and let's begin row number three. In row number three we're not going to do an increase. We're just gonna match what we have so it can increase gradually on its own. So you just chain one and apply one single uh, crochet into each stitch all the way to the other side. So please do that all the way across and meet me at the other side and we have to talk about the repeat because we now have just completed one set of a repeat already. So let's begin to talk about that in a moment. So I've already just finished row number three and I've already turned it. So now you have to repeat the second and third row a set number of times. For my size I only have to do it one more time so rows one and two once and then for the medium you're going to repeat it three times. For the large you'll repeat it five times and for the extra large it's going to be eight times. So repeat rows two and three the set number of times for your size 
and then meet me back here in just a moment and we're already gonna start shaping the legs. So remember row number two is going to have the increase on the edges and row number three is just gonna be a straight single crochet across. Please repeat the number of times that's stated on the pattern for you. So once you have the repeat done we're now going to shape the legs and we're gonna do the first size. So we're going to be shaping the legs by going in three different sections on the, on the project in order to make this work. So it's going to be relatively quickly and you'll notice that the small size that I just, that I'm doing here is actually a really really quick pattern. So you're going to go either one single crochet in the next three four, six or eight single crochets and then you turn your work. So you're gonna do the size that is matching your project. So let's begin to do that and make sure the next row you're going to repeat a certain number of times in order to get that to go as well. So let's start shaping the legs first side. So I'm gonna start shaping the legs and I'm gonna do the first side. So we're gonna have a section here. The center is here and then the last second side is right here. So you're just gonna chain up one and you'll do the number that is requested for you. So chain up one. In my case it's gonna be three. So it could be three, four, six or eight. So refer to the pattern. So in my case it's three. So just do the first three. So one, two, three and that's it already done. Turn your work and you're gonna do the next row. So chain one and do one single crochet in each. And then it states in the pattern after you turned it says repeat the last row either one, three, five or five times. So in my case I just have to do it one time. So just chain up one and do one single crochet in each. Now I'm going to fasten off because that's it for me and I want to start a new strand and we need to start and do the center in just a second. Starting on the center we're going to skip the number of stitches. So either be two, four, six or seven. So right where we're sitting on the very last one that we were just sitting in right here we're going to skip the next stitches that are right here. So you're gonna continually work across as you go. So in my case here we have the skipping two, four, six or seven uh, single crochets. You're going to join with the slip stitch and then you'll do one single crochet you know, the same as the slip stitch and then one single crochet in the next 11, 17, 25 or 31. So this is the center of the dog coat. So and it gives you a total count of 11, 18, 26 or 32 as the final count across that section if you want to know that. You're going to just do one single crochet in each and then repeat the last row. This repeating the last row is the same as it was before. So it's either one, three, five or five. Let's begin. For extra security just create a slip knot and skip the number of stitches that it has as suggested. So it's either two, four, six or seven. So I'm gonna skip two and I'm gonna go to the third and you're going to insert into the third or whatever one you're going into and just attach, chain one and single crochet into the same one. So it says to single crochet either in the next 11, 17, 25 or 31 choose the size. In my case it's gonna be 11. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven. So with that 11 plus the original there should be a total count of 12 stitches. So you'll have the number that you have on there. Once you have that done you're gonna turn your work, chain up one and do one straight shot of single crochet across this section. And then once that's done you're gonna turn your work and it says repeat the last row either once, three times, five or five. So choose the number of repeat that you're doing. In my case it'll be a total of just once. So just chain up one and one single crochet in each across. So go back and forth the number of times that it needs to happen and then you're going to fasten that off and then maybe on the next part which is the second side of the legs. So we'll do that next. So once you're done just fasten off and we'll start a new section. So blazing away in the pattern it's gonna be the second side now and we're gonna skip the number of stitches and this is the same number that we skipped when we started the center just as a consistency. And again you'll do the same no a number of rows 
just like you had. This case though when you go to skip you're just crocheting all the way to the end of the existing row and then you turn your work one single crochet back and then repeat either one, three, five or five times. Let's do that next. So skipping the number of stitches that it says it can be either two, four, six or seven. In my case we're gonna skip two and I'm going, going to go to the third. Attach, chain one and single crochet in and then I only have two more stitches left. So it's like before there was only three stitches on the edge of the other side if you recall. So in your case it could be uh, bigger than that. It could be four, six or eight. So turning your work just chain up one and do one single crochet in each. And then finally turn your work and you're going to repeat the last row either um, what do we have here? It's either once, three times or five times. So just do that and then that's gonna be the end of the section. In my case it's just once. And at this point you do not wanna fasten off. Just leave on that yarn and we're going to begin the joining row next. We're moving on to the joining row next and we're just gonna do one single crochet in each of the stitches across. However when you have to jump over the spaces the space uh, count that you're gonna chain is the same number that of, of stitches that you skipped. So if I skipped over two I'm chaining two. If I skipped over four, six or seven I'm, I'm chaining the same number in order to make that work. So we're gonna go all the way across all the sections at this time and we're gonna do that next. Let's begin the joining row. So the joining row is going to join this together to form the, the holes for the uh, legs. What I want you to do is when we get to here we wanna uh, put that underneath the stitches so it gets stuck so it's less sewing for later. So you're just gonna chain up one and you'll single crochet the number of stitches that it will take in order to get to the gap space. So for the small we knew that we had skipped over two and if you have the other sizes it's the same number so chain the number of stitches that you skipped. In my case it's two. Put the straggler down on top that you're gonna run into and just continue to single crochet in the, in the next one over here to form the circle and you're just gonna go right up over top of that tail end to get that stuck underneath. So you're just gonna zip your way across and then when you get to the other leg hole you wanna do exactly what we just did. So it's the same number that we're going to skip. So it's chain two in my case because I skipped two stitches before. And again the straggler just put it down on top and go right up over it and then finish this side all the way to the edge. And therefore the holes of the legs are now in. Turn your work and let's go back to the pattern. Now the next row looks really confusing but I'm telling you that it's not. You're just going to chain up one and you'll single crochet in each of the stitches that are there. When you hit those chain spaces you're going to single crochet the same number of single crochets as the chain that you made. So if you did a chain two you'll have two single crochets in that chain two. If so if you did that so then you just have to match exactly what you see. So it's, it looks confusing but it's not and we're going to move on to do that next. To do this next row you're just going to match everything that you see. So you'll just chain up one and do one single crochet in each of the stitches. And when you get to the chain you're going to single crochet the same number of chains that you did. Now go right into the actual chain work itself and do the same number. So you got one and two. So don't go into a space because it'll be obvious and then just continually just jump on the other side once you have the same number done. See and it looks pretty consistent. So you're just gonna zip across and you'll do the same when you get to the other leg. And my yarn is about to change color. Here it's one thing I like about this yarn it just keeps on going. And when I get to this leg I know that there's only two chains there so I just put one in each of those and then continue to single crochet all the remaining to the edge. Okay and therefore it's more consistent. Let's turn our work and begin the next row. So the next row here is one single crochet in each of the stitches I'll cross. 
Okay, so you're going to continue to repeat the last row until from the actual joining row which is right here. You're going to do this until you can measure a total distance of four and a half, seven, ten, or eleven and you need to end on the wrong side. So when you go to shape the belly the right side which has been marked and let me just zoom you out here the, that should be the very start of this. So when we go to shape the belly you should be able to see this. So when we get to the size that we wanna get to we have to make sure that the last row that we do we're on the wrong side and you'll be able to tell that. So let's do the next row until the size dimensions that you need and that's what we're gonna do next. So starting the next row you're just gonna chain up one and do one single crochet in each stitch and then you just continue to go back and forth and depending on your size you'll just keep on going so that you have a distance from this point here of either four and a half, seven, ten and a half, or eleven and a half inches. And I want you to do that and when we come back I'll be done that particular section and we'll move on. Please don't fasten off though and we're going to continue from the shaping of the belly next. So I've now got to the point where I got my four and a half inches and I'm finishing off on the wrong side. So don't actually fasten off but that's where I am. So when I go to start shaping the belly next when I turn it over I should be on the right side of the project and that's where we're gonna begin our journey next. So let's go back to the pattern. So we're now going to shape the belly. So we have to slip stitch a number of stitches in order to just come in a little bit to make an indent and then I'm going to slip stitch four. In my case you could have five, seven or ten and then you'll chain up one and you'll do one single crochet either in the next 14, 24, 36 or 42 stitches and then you're just gonna turn around. So that's just uh, gonna be a really kind of a cool idea and we're gonna create the indent by doing that. The next rows then we're going to do a decrease which then will have a nice indentation of coming down on an angle and then you'll do one single crochet in the next and so we're going to be repeating the last two rows which will be one time, it could be three, four or five times depending on the size that you're working on. So that's what we're gonna do next of shaping the belly. So let's shape the belly and we're going to slip stitch. This first one counts as one so slips into the second one. So that will count as two and then three and four. So I'm only slip stitching four. You could have five, seven or ten. Right where you've finished with your slip stitching you're gonna chain up one and you'll single crochet then the next either 14, 24, 36 or 42. So please do that and just meet me back here in just a moment and if you uh, if you're doing it right it'll be the same amount of stitches that you've skipped over here uh, when you did that kind of concept. So please uh, just count on over and then meet me back on the other side in a second. So at this point I come to the other side. Now if I skipped over and I, and I went over to the fourth and that's where I started there will be three empty stitches here. So I wanna make sure that I see three empty stitches on this side. So if something is wrong count wise just make sure it's the same number of stitches that are empty on one side versus the other so that you can be consistent. Turn your work and we're now going to do a decrease of the next row and let's begin that next. The next two rows are considered a repeat. So you're going to do the next two rows as one and then you're going to repeat the next two rows either the one time three four or five times depending on your size. To start the first row you're going to just chain one and you are going to apply then a single crochet in the first stitch and the next two are going to be two together. So just going in, pull through and then in, pull through and then pull through all three loops and that's a two, that's a, a single crochet two together. So don't bother to count as you get all the way across but what I want you to do though is stop when you see the last three stitches empty and so it's a nice way of just not being able to care with what the stitch counts are going to be at this point. So it's an easy way of improvising. So I'm looking for the final three stitches. So one, two and three. Once you see the final three stitches the next two are going to come together with the single crochet two together and then you'll single crochet into the last and that was the first part of the repeat and the next part which is the next row is the second part of the repeat. So just chain up one and apply one single crochet into each of the stitches going across. So just remember the first time across is a decrease. The second time is just maintaining the stitch work and you're going to repeat those um, two rows the set number of times. So 
So once you've got that done you're just going to turn and then continue to repeat the set of instruction the number of times that it states. In my case it said one time. So to repeat again you're gonna chain up one, single crochet in the first. The next two are single crochet two together. And then I zip across again until I see the last three stitches that are empty. So one, two and three. So once you see the last three empty just put the next two together and then single crochet in the last and then turn your work and just chain up one and blast all the way across with just one single crochet in each. And that's your repeat. So in my case my repeating is done because this is the first time it's been repeated. In your case you could have three, four or five times depending on your size. So we have to make a decision after we have this repeat done. Is it long enough and if not then we adjust and if it's uh, just right or it's a little bit over then this is where you're gonna stop. So let's turn our work and decide. So right now we have to do the set of repeats as I showed you and you had to do it either once, three, four or five times. Here we're going to work the first row after the neck ribbing so that it's 10 and a half inches, 16, 22 or 25. This is a standard dimension. You'll find that in the coats. So what you're going to do is that you'll take your information and right from the collar itself. So let me just back you out here so you can see everything. And I'm gonna take my tape measure. So in my case for the small size I need 10 and a half inches. So I'm just gonna measure it from the base of the, the collar and I can see that I am around 10 inches. So all I wanna do is just go back and forth just single crochets until I see 10 and a half. So I might have two rows to do. And then you're going to do that. So you may have uh, 10 and a half, 16, 22 or 25 but it's not gonna be too far past where this is decreasing in order to do that. So I need you to go back and forth until you get to that dimension and at that point um, it's gonna be awesome and we're then going to um, fasten off at that. So I got it to the size I wanna get and I'm gonna snip my yarn and I'm going to pull through. So now is a great time to show you how to weave in your ends with a tapestry needle. So Now when you're going to put it in you can see the right side of the project. So I want you to favor turning this in a way that you can see the back side of the project and just going in and drag the, sti uh, the yarn up underneath the stitch work on the inside of the stitch work of the stitches and pull and then go back and then one more time. Third time is a charm. So any loose ends that you have that is not secured this is the best way to do it especially if you're taking this coat on and off the little fur baby that you're doing. So now we have to look at the stitch marker and see where we are and now we're going to create the seam line which is going to do it in. So I want you to leave this here right where it is. So the right side is facing up and we're gonna roll the two edges together and we're gonna sew along the seam line that's here on the back. So by putting it like this we're gonna uh, fold this outside right at the end of this step. And what we're trying to do at this particular point is that we're putting the seam line on the inside of the coat. So just using another piece of yarn and coming across. Now if you put um, a slip knot on the other side of this strand right here you can just throw it through and that will lock. Now lay the straggler or the loose end of that on the top and just continually match the stitches across from each other. So row to row and you're just jumping over. This is called a whip stitch. And just move on down. The stitches will match each other as you're going. And continue to go all the way down. So noticing that I'm going up over top of that straggler so that it gets stuck in and once it's down about an inch or so you can just safely just cut it off or just weave in the tail with your tapestry hook or tapestry needle once again. So please just go all the way down the edge and you wanna stop where the belly shaping begins and that's as far as you're going to go. So please do that and I'll see you how to, I'll show you how to fasten off. Once you get all the way to the other side I want you to create a knot on this side and just going in 
and remember that we're still on the inside of the coat. So we wanna favor this side as the hiding spot. So just drag in the yarn up underneath the, some of the stitch work but don't go to the other side and go back in the direction from which you came. And then going back in the other direction. It's your second time and then finally the third time is a charm. And once you have this done just safely trim it down and you're going to flip this coat so that you can see the good side of the work. So just flip it inside out and we're going to begin our next journey of doing the back edging in just a moment. And, and there you go. And that's what the edging will look like. So it's actually pretty good and this is the back of the coat and I want you to concentrate on the back edging right here. So we're now going to start the back edging and the back edging will start at the seam line and you're just going to match and put single crochets in each of the stitches. So just join it. Chain one and then single crochet. So you're just gonna apply one single crochet in each of the stitches or the side of the rows. Just evenly space it and what you're concerned about the most is this turn right here. So on the corners of these turns you need to put in three single crochets so it, it'll make that turn. So it's just a nice way of finishing off the edging and it will round off that corner as well. So once you're in the corner just chain or just single crochet three times. So once, twice, and three times that it gives it the turn that you need and then continuing along and then you'll have the turn again and then come on down to the other side and this is where I'm gonna meet you in just a moment. When you get back around you're just going to go right to the end and slip stitch into the very beginning and then fasten off and do the technique of weaving the yarn in and out of the stitches favoring the back side, the underside and you'll do that. So let's continue and we're going to move on to the leg ed edging next and we still, we're just now gonna work on the right side of the project. So it's the good side and you can see it's still there. So it's the outside of the coat. Let's do the leg edging next and we're just going to go around and just equally space single crochets around the openings of the legs and this will give it a rounded off look. So just attach, I would attach on the nearest to the seam line so that at least this will be completely underneath the dog's legs so that you'll never see it. So just join, chain one and single crochet in each of the stitch work going around and all this is going to do is going to round off that square or the rectangle edge and make it a little more rounded which then the bands that we'll do will attach to this section that we're doing right now. So I need you to do both of the leg openings the same way. You can not hear me counting because I'm not and uh, I'm just equally making it look okay. And once I think I'm around which I am I'm just going to join it to the beginning with a slip stitch and then pull through and I'm just going to hide it in with my tapestry needle and that's what I need you to do for the other side as well. So please do both of the leg ed edgings now and meet me back here for leg bands. Okay so my leg edgings are done. You can see that. Now if you don't wanna do the bands you, you don't have to. There's no crochet police as far as I know. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is the leg bands and it's gonna be the same thing that we did for the collar here of just adding this uh, back looping and we're gonna do two of those and then we'll sew it to this section here to complete it today. To do the leg bands what we're going to do is chain four like we did with the neck ribbing. You one single crochet in each of the stitches across after you did the second one. So there's only three single crochets and then working in the back loops and you're gonna continue to go back and forth until it measures five and a half or five inches, six, eight or nine and a half and then that's where you're gonna end it and then we're gonna sew those. So you need to do two of those please and let's begin to do that next. Let's do two leg bands. I'll just quickly show you one and then you'll do the other. So you're just going to chain four. So one, two, three, four and then second chain from the hook 
single crochet back. So there's only three stitches. Okay, so you'll turn your work and do the next row which will be the same now to the end. So you just chain up one and just do one single crochet in the back loop for all three of those and then turn your work. So the goal is, is to get this to a certain dimension. So it's either five, six, eight, or nine and a half inches and then fasten off. I then, and when you fasten off, I'll be there in a, in a moment, but when you fasten off, please leave a longer tail and you'll use that tail to sew it down to your project on there. So let's uh, get to the inches that I need and I'll be right back in a moment. Once I get to the dimension that I need, in my case it was only five, I wanna leave a longer tail here and then I'm going to use that to sew it to the, to the actual coat itself. So just pull a loop through, make a second one and do the second one exactly the same size and I'll be right back in a moment. So do number two. So I've just now finished the second one and I fastened off. My first goal is, is that I want to turn this in and make them into sleeves. So I'm going to put the long tail onto a tapestry needle in order to bring it to a close. So folding it together, just come across and just match. There's only three stitches so it's not gonna take you that long. And what I would think about doing is also putting the straggler down so that you can get that stuck underneath there as well and also take care of that with the tapestry needle later. And once you have all three secured, you will have your little mini sleeve. Now you're gonna bring your project back and you're going to match it. So just eyeing it up and I would start on the inside and just kinda eye it up and just kinda stretch it so that it goes around the whole of that section of the dog coat. This is called whip stitching. So using my finger in behind, I can just kind of stretch things if I have to. And then once you have this done, just have it tie itself into a knot. So just feeding it through. And then just going in and out of the stitch work a total of three times. And you're gonna do that with any loose uh, tails that I talked about already. And just keep staying on the inside of this coat, so near the seam line. And stay within the same color as well. Therefore you will never see it. So I want you to attach the second one on and that's gonna be today's project of doing this cozy pup dog coat. And I'll be right back in a moment. So now the dog coat is done. It's the cozy pup dog coat you got the let me just put in my fingers there. You have the legs and you have the neckline and it looks pretty cool. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. So hopefully you've enjoyed yourself and until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.